It's the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Krause. That blows my mind every time you do it, Ian. Just boom, just head explodes. It's it's <laughs> incredible. It's like a melon full of confetti. Yes, yes. That's about what's in my head, so... <laughs> That's just yes. It makes sense that it's confetti. There's not much in there otherwise. Anyway, how are you doing? <laughs> I am eager to get to these questions that come from our patrons over at patreon.com slash bumblecast, kofi.com slash bumblecast, and our YouTube members. Oh wow, we're jumping in already. We're wasting no time. All right then. Straight to the deep end. All right then. Let's get into this one here from Andrew D. You already confirmed that Sonic Superstars takes place after the current IDW Classic Sonic comics, but I wanted to ask to make sure that it meant it was also after the upcoming Amy 30th anniversary comic as well. Or perhaps that is yet to be revealed. Why don't you read it and play it and be surprised? <laughs> what? No, I have to ask you, Ian. I'm you can ask all you want. Anybody can ask me anything, but it's <laughs> my prerogative to decide how I answer. Okay, I guess. Ian, give me your bank account number. No, there's <laughs> your answer. <laughs> Dear Ian, what is your social security number? Or whatever the Canadian equivalent is. Social insurance number. So everyone has a sin. Oh, it's well, <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> Yeah? Only one? That straight up sounds like it's that of an anime, doesn't? Everyone is born with their sin number. Yes, yes. You have sinned. You have sinned. You have sinned, I guess. <laughs> uh, I think I think what what he's saying, Andrew, is that it doesn't matter whether it's before or after. It really, honestly, for classic, it especially doesn't matter. So I get the desire. I get the desire to know, but come on. Just wait until the game comes out at least. Or the comic. Or both. And then and then you can figure it out. You can figure it out. Here's a question from Ann Tales. Spoilers for IDW Sonic number 63. Anyway, what did Amy think of Sonic and Blaze's Spagonian date? Was she watching from a tall balcony as they got ice cream and held hands on the clock tower through a sniper scope? See, no, that's my addition. I, I didn't. Did they? T Aunt Tails didn't write that. You see, the folks who are laughing at this, yeah. I laugh with you. The folks who are seriously setting out to sea on this ship. You're going to be in a route for surprise in number 64. So this is why I don't wade in on this discussion. There is no winning. I'm just saying. Okay. Calm down. All right. So, all right. Blaze Amy date confirmed for IDW 64. <laughs> also, it wasn't a date. They were sightseeing. They were running around being pals. Calm down. Yes. Just holding hands like normal people do and acting all embarrassed. Hmm. Also, 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 hmm. Amy is not the hyperattentive, clingy thing that she used to be. She's I don't know. happy if her friends are happy. It's okay. Calm down. Yeah, I, I, I'm, yeah, but she might still think think it a, li a little, think it a tiny bit, just a little. It's like a, it's like she's much healthier now, but you know, still a right, tiny bit point. of her in there. To counterpoint. Sonic's first thing on his mind was to bring food back for Amy. Is that something you do when you're on a date? Oh, I have to get food for my female acquaintance on the way home. No. <laughs> if you want to read into something, read and, into that. And, and you know what? He also said he was going to bring back food for Tail, so you can read into that too. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you're not reading the book that's actually there, so read in as much as you want. This is, you're, you're, you're spicy today. <laughs> ooh, ooh! But she blushed. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> uh, it's just a little bit of fun. All right, here's a question from Ava. Maybe spoilers for the recently released number sixty-three of IDW Sonic. 
Someone was asking about this in a Discord chat, and I was curious enough to ask, was there a slight rewrite for number 63? The preview a while back seemed to make it sound like there would be mostly silver and the diamond cutters. While there is some silver shenanigans, the spotlight is mostly on the new guy. Just curious. Not that I'm aware of, and the new guy is one of the diamond cutters, so there you go. Keep in mind, Evan and I typically don't write the preview copy. I can't remember the last time I did, honestly. I did that more back in the Archie oh, days. I was going to say, I thought you wrote it so, in Archie. That's more editorial interior stuff, and they're going to write something that is enticing to make you pick up the book. And if it is... And maybe slightly misleading. Within the, with it, if it's reasonably associated with what goes on, then it's not lying, it's marketing. <laughs> <laughs> and really, is there any difference? <laughs> no, no, there isn't. <laughs> Not really, no. <laughs> People say it's false advertising. All advertising is false. <laughs> that's the point. It's false advertising when you get caught. Yes, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Uh, let me cover my ass here. I'm not saying that the solicits were false advertising. Mm. saying that they are written in such a way to be enticing instead of just saying, hey, it's a story about silver and duo. Your <laughs> average person doesn't know who duo is. Maybe they've heard about the diamond cutters. It's, oh, we're three questions in. I'm already tired. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Mm. Here's one from Axis. Hypothetical question. Let's say Sonic finally finds his flame and blaze the cat and they become an official couple. If that happened, how do you think the others would react to them being together? Also, would they be considered a power couple, a speed couple, or an elemental couple? Thing is, I know you don't structure the shows like this. You just go alphabetical. I, I mean, I literally just grab the questions. This is how they are. This is how... The dominoes fall. But this I, is literally what it... I mean, this is what happened this week. This is what people are talking about, for good or bad. It, it's just, you know, it's on people's minds. Well, Sonic and Blaze's friends are all wonderfully supportive, positive people. So they would be accepting and supportive and positive about it. it it'd be fine. Yeah. There would be joy. It, there's not really a lot of drama to be had there. Now, for the distinction kind of comes down to how you classify blaze given that she is kind of a powerhouse but she's also kind of speedy but she can also sort of glide maybe fly and she so, has fire i mean sonic has a couple of wind-esque techniques but he's not like a straight up elemental user no it's more of an incidental thing they're they're a speed um, couple i mean i've been told that blaze doesn't actually have speed speed is more of a byproduct of her powers oh boy oh boy uh, you have just opened a can of worms buddy eh, but i that's such a nuanced distinction because she's going to be using the those powers anyway she she so was she's already she's gonna be fast so she was just eh. keeping up with sonic in the comic so yeah propelled by fiery power Yes, kind of like kind of like how Shadow's thing is all in his shoes. Shadow's speed is mm -hmm. in his shoes, except he's still as fast as Sonic, regardless. Whatever. Uh, I don't know. Sonic's pretty powerful. Blaze is pretty powerful. We'll just call him a power couple and not make it like the distinction of like Knuckles as a power type. Okay, they're cool. They're a cool couple. There you go. Cool. Uh, Rad. Excellent. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. We'll go with that way past cool, even. Jammin'. <laughs> Jammin'. And I hope you like Jammin', too. Here's this question from Batman 69 <laughs> Law. What if Eggman, Zavok, Surge, and Kit get drafted into DC's Suicide Squad? Let's say the team from the 2020 movie. Or if you're not familiar with that one, anyone that you are familiar with. Let's say that they saw that Amanda Waller is willing to explode some heads. So they're more willing to follow directions. How well do they do as a force team? How do they get along with the team? Do any of them form bonds or make a connection with the team? And can Dr. Eggman somehow gain control of the whole operation? If so, how soon? I'm not super... I know I'm familiar with the premise, but not with the 
various teams. Or yeah. Makeups. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Deadshot seems to be kind of a go to across them for whatever reason, but I don't, they're not a team I'm dedicated to knowledgeable about. Um, but I know the premise. My first question is how do you put a collar on Zavok? He has no neck. <laughs> Doesn't have to go on his head. Is it a, is it a muzzle? Just strap around his head? Do you give him like a little explodey beanie on his forehead? Mm. <laughs> Aaliyah says he, he wears a car boot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe he. Maybe he has to ingest his. I don't know. It's how do you make that work? But that's not the spirit of the question. No, Everybody has explodies around them, and they have to do things and get along. Uh, I think it's. I think we've seen that all of them can work together if their personal lives depend on it. I think Surge would have the worst time of it, and would be seriously contemplating if just setting it off is the better alternative because she hates this. But <laughs> Kit's a pushover, and he'll do anything if it means keeping her head on her shoulders. Uh, yeah. I hope Waller figured out some kind of way to keep it EM shielded, but also receive a signal, because Zavik could probably either A, turn his off, or B, detonate somebody else's for funsies. And I know they're <laughs> supposed to be tamper-proof, but Eggman's a genius. He's going to have his hot wire to be ineffective Within the first day, easy. He's not going to do it for anybody else, of course. No. Why, why would he? <laughs> he didn't. Anything he would barter with them saying that you know, he can deactivate, he can stop Waller's signal. What he doesn't specify is that he's changing it to his own signal. Yes. So, okay, they're out marching to his tune now, except they really just trade one overlord for the other. We get signal main screen turn on. Wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we already somebody already set him up the bomb. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. All your base are belong to us. Uh, did you answer all that one? Pretty much, I think so. As close as I can. I mean, good enough. Between the four of them, they're going to kind of stick to their usual groupings. Yeah, I could maybe see Surge and Zavik getting along in the We Hate Eggman camp. <laughs> but Zavok's going to use Surge as a means to his own ends, and Surge is going to feel like an idiot for trusting anyone for half a minute. So we'll, we'd be going back to square one pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, here's one from Butter Noodles. Eggman released his shadow about ten games early during the events of Sonic One. How does this change things? Does he share the same rivalry with Sonic? And the most important part: would Shadow have a classic design or look the same as we know him? Well, I mean, it's in the past, so. It if we're going with the proper thematics, he should be classic designed. I mean, yeah, yeah. Although it would be funnier if he looked like he does later, but. <laughs> nah, mm. I, I want to see little tubby classic shadow. <laughs> so grumpy and round. Adorable. <laughs> uh, kind of hard to slap together those two games like peanut butter and jelly because sonic one is eggman's doing a bad and sonic will stop him sa2 is shadow is the tortured engineered living weapon seeking posthumous revenge via the chaos emeralds one's got a little more to it than the other just a tad just a tad I don't Unless think... you want us to say that eggman the the missing seventh emerald is the one eggman used <laughs> to wake up shadow and now they're on south island looking for the remaining six to power the eclipse cannon that that might work uh the missing seventh emerald was the friends we made along the way <laughs> <laughs> and it you know once shadow was popped out of his hushed casket he was out <laughs> for revenge you know, he's going to do anything to get the emeralds. So, of course, he's going to be going up against Sonic because Sonic wants to get the emeralds himself. Yep. And then we'd get something akin to the Knuckles stuff out of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, only with Shadow. And, and we however, would. you would make Chaos Control work without making it broken as heck in 2D. And we wouldn't get Knuckles. Hmm. This timeline sucks. 
<laughs> well, I think there's also the question of presuming that they, you know, get the emeralds on South Island and go up to the Ark. You know, maybe scrap brain as a spaceport. Uh, Amy isn't there to remind Shadow of his true self and his true promise. And we don't have the gang all there to stop the bile lizard, so Eggman wins? Cool. Okay, maybe this timeline isn't so bad. <laughs> Interesting. Or maybe Gerald wins. <laughs> Here's a question from E200 Paragon. Ever since Sonic Frontiers, one idea that I've loved talking about is the idea of the Ancients coming back to life. Given that the Ancients were masters of the Chaos Emerald, it's interesting to imagine that one could overpower anything Eggman and or Gun use against it and possibly pose a legit threat to Super Sonic. With all this in mind, my question is, how would you create the idea of Sonic having to battle a revived Ancient? I don't know if I'd want to do that. Because the first thing that pops into my head is the Diadect out of Halo 4, and he was lame. <laughs> that that whole thing was lame. And, of course, the rebuttal to that is, well, don't do that. It's like, I know, I know, I know. But, you know, long-lost progenitor species of incredible technological power coming back to fight the hero. Yeah, it's, it's the Diadect. Ew. And, you know, why would the ancient want to start trouble anyway? Why not be peaceful? New lease on life. Why has he got to start a, um, a mess for everybody to clean up? I don't know. It's, it's a possible avenue to pursue, but I kind of prefer the ancients to have been long lost. You know, they, they came, they dropped off the emeralds, they built some big old robots to fight to Screamo to, I think that's good. I'm I'm good with that. Now, if Sega comes around and says, hey, we're doing a Sonic Frontiers 2 Revenge of the Ancients, it's like, well, let's see how to spin on that. But I personally wouldn't am not inclined to go in that direction right now. All right. Here's one from Happy Times. For Sonic's next storybook adventure, he goes into a D and D handbook. What party of familiar faces does he form, and what challenging foes does he face? I feel like this would cross over with a lot of our other Sonic and friends do D and D questions. Just it's not his friends; it's their XPs. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing: I don't know anything about any of the like characters actually in like D and D. Like I know nothing. I know, like, some of the names of some of the characters. That's about it. I know, like, Drizzt and... Yeah. <laughs> that's about it. But I have it, never played a D&D &D game that takes place in a pre-existing uh, um, thing, an existing setting, so... Well, you're already kind of ahead of me. I thought it was just kind of open-ended. Here's the rule sets. Here's some premises there's like established characters oh, yeah. and narratives. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, you could, the whole game could be written for you if you just want to play something that's already exists, but oh. yeah, I mean the game, they even give you characters. Like if you just want to play and don't want to worry about making up a character or anything, they already have everything for you or you can just make your own. Huh? Yeah. It's all, it's all, it's very, uh, okay. You have options. <laughs> so, yeah. So I thought it was completely open-ended. I didn't even, didn't even think about presets or loadouts. Well, huh. I mean, that's the Dungeons and Dragons movie that recently came out. That is actually based on like stuff that was outlined in a lot of the setting stuff. Or in the, uh, I think some of it came from the comics and things like that. And there's oh, actually wow. is established lore and story and everything. It's not just like, here's the thing, have fun. <laughs> I th I thought they just took you know all the provided tools and crafted a fun movie out of it. No, 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 no. Okay. No, I mean they they mentioned a whole lot of locations. And went to a lot of locations that were pure fan service. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, in summation, uh, happy times, I'm too ignorant to probably answer this, apparently. <laughs> D&D has a lot of lore, yes. Yes, and it's argued about probably just as much as Sonic's, if not more. It has definitely been argued about for longer. So. It has definitely been argued about for longer than Sonic's has. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. It's probably even worse because you actually have things that you can rule lawyer rather than yes the lore and the rules the introductory anime rule of cool uh-huh uh-huh huh. mm. yeah yeah I not everybody series more or less enticing not everybody wants to uh necessarily spend all the time to make up their own stuff their own settings their own characters so that makes they sense. give you stuff that you can just use but uh, i mean obviously you can change it or adjust it or just come up with something completely different so yeah it's very uh it's very cool in that way so uh but to answer this question i don't know because <laughs> like i said i have not i am not in any way familiar with any of the pre-established lore and characters or anything of D really aside from the recent movie and some other random things here and there so Sorry, happy times. Here's one from Levi C. How much fun was it writing the egg memos in Sonic Frontiers? It was harrowing. (laughs) Because here was this opportunity to go crazy with lore, and I did not know how much latitude I had. And I don't think I got any notes on any of them, or if it was, it was very small, like word choice. I think you mentioned that before. Like, yeah, you didn't get much of anything. And it's like, did I... Could I have gone further? <laughs> Should I have pitched more? But <laughs> are they going to rewrite all the these and they won't even be recognizable anyway? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here is one from Miles the Prower. So the sword of Acorn, love it or hate it, swords are cool. So what I'm wondering is if you got to explore its Moebius equivalent, what would you do with it? Or is this Lost Hedgehog Tales territory? And if it is, uh, then who? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, that one doesn't ring a bell. I don't think we had anything planned for it. Probably because about the time I came on, like one of the, fir- one of the first things I was told to do was simplify, which included getting rid of the sword and the crown and the source and all that just gone. Bye bye. It's like, okay. Don't have to worry about that anymore, but it would still exist on Antimobius, wouldn't it? Hmm. Maybe. Inescapable. Unless the same reboot happened at the same time. Eh, no, 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 because this was pre reboot. This what, was just Well This was we'll editorial direction. We'll not, just we'll just say so we'll just say rough equivalents of the same things happened to try and balance out the balance the world. You must keep the world in balance, Ian. You must keep no. the evil world in balance with the with the good world. Well, that raises even more questions then, because in the regular world, Mogul made the big power play with Nagas at his side and all of their minions, mm-hmm. and Sir Connery made the big sacrificial move to smite them with holy power. So we would have to establish anti-Mogul, anti-Nagas, all their anti-companions. No. No, no, no. Anti Connery. Although Death Knight Connery does sound pretty cool. Yeah, you you could just say that the rough equivalent of some sort of events in a similar fashion happened, maybe with different characters, maybe in different circumstances, but ultimately the result was the same. But that's not the rich fun because it's the evil universe. It it's like the absolute bargain basement concept of the mirror mirror trope. I know. It's one to one. That's the whole point of Scourge's taking over the planet is everything was one to one. He was going to break it down so it would be forced to be different. I have pigeonholed myself here, Kyle. I have to adhere to these rules to a title that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. That's not creatively bankrupt. This sounds like it's a, a challenge. This sounds like a this sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> this is, I can quit any time I want. This this sounds uh, like this sounds like a you problem. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, As in you're the one who I did this. Although you're not I mean you kind of are, but you're also not. 
<laughs> We've gotten a little lost in the woods. The point is Sword of Acorns, evil version. Yeah. And for that, we got to go back to the source of all, which was supposed to be a neutral party, a kind <laughs> of omniscient goo from the pi- primordial universe that brought wisdom and insight, only it kind of didn't seem to be that way later. So, what? I mean, if anything, it kind of led Max to make all the wrong decisions during his time. And we can't just say he ignored the advice because he seemed to be steadfast in its holy directiveness. So for whatever reason, it seemed to pan out that the regular source of all, and by extension, the crown and the sword were leading the kingdom astray. So in the antiverse, it's doing its darndest to save the world and everything else is getting in its way. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and it's called the source of null. Instead of the source of all. <laughs> it's weird. And it would still be intrinsically linked to Max. It doesn't really seem to have any magical properties beyond him other than possibly being a conduit for other magic. So maybe Scourge at some point would try to steal it and make it do magic <laughs> shenanigans for him. But he has no inherent magic himself. So instead he's just going to cut things, which, you know, it's also kind of fun. That's also cool. So if you wanted to steal a, like, pond fountain, how would you go about doing that? (laughs) (laughs) A very big steam shovel. (laughs) Yeah. Here you go. Here you go. Scourge decides that maybe with the proper magical conduit, he can better handle the negative side effects of the anarchy barrel. So we get full-on Excalibur Sonic-styled Death Knight Scourge. Hmm... Hmm. All right. All right. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. Get a badass minor key version of with me. <laughs> it's already in minor key. Is it? Yeah. All right. Well, most likely. Wait. Yeah. Most Would switching it to major key. Make it sound cool. I don't know. Uh, uh. Minor key doesn't mean evil. It usually does though. No, not always. The legend of Zelda theme is in minor key, buddy. All right. Look, we've already well established my ignorance in this episode. Let's just move on to the next question so I can further put my foot in my mouth. Okay. All right. Let's do that. (laughs) This one from Morlis. How would you rate the Freedom Fighters in Sonic Boom? What would their relationship with the main Boomcast be like? What about Eggman? Would they let Knuckles into their secret clubhouse? (laughs) (laughs) You say clubhouse, and I believe that is the linchpin of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. They are like... This super exclusive club that takes themselves way too seriously, or at least Sally does. Mm -hmm. Maybe just lean into it. Boom Sally is what everyone thinks Sally has been over the years. All the negative and bad faith takes rolled into one. (laughs) Just condense it into one version of Sally that is dedicated to tick everybody off. That's funny, isn't it? Uh, (laughs) Bunny would be largely the same. Maybe so, a little more laid back, a little more chill. So would Antoine. <laughs> well, no, Antoine would be more like he is in the cartoon, Sad I Am. Yeah, a- Antoine would be all about it. He he is <laughs> drunk deep of the Kool-Aid. He is right there with his princess. Mm-hmm. They're going to achieve whatever it is the goal of this club is that she's founded. Whatever it is. She's yep. a princess. He's going to follow her. Ends of the earth. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And Roder, Roder, <laughs> Broder is, is like super chill buddy buddy with everybody except for Tails. They are the fiercest, pithiest of rivals <laughs> in terms of inventions. Wow. Wow. Like he, like he is like almost catatonically chill. And like, hey, Sonic, how's it going? Amy's been a while. Knuckles, my man. Tails. <laughs> that's weird but yeah i mean i like (laughs) i like it it's boom we can go crazy with boom it's true it's true and nicole see tech in that world is so clunky looking maybe it's still the kind of deadpan ai voice thing but she doesn't have any one particular housing she's constantly jumping into new shells so you know (laughs) She's or bought for a little bit, Q-bot for a little bit, ballot stuffing box for a little bit. 
Yeah. Eggman's about to crush them all in his newest Devastator robot, and then it suddenly stops and waves politely. She's taking control of it. Yeah. Where will she show up today? <laughs> uh, and Dulcie's the sea monster. All right. Works for me. Styx was right. There is a sea monster. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, gasp, six, you were right. A sea monster. He's like, no, not that one. I know Dulcie. <laughs> you're like an ass every Saturday. How you doing? Yep. Right, any more out there? No, just me. Okay, keep looking. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's not suspicious at all. And the Freedom Fighter's main goal is to, you know, preemptively oust the evil terror that is Eggman. So they're constantly... <laughs> trying to raid the volcano base, but you know, they always happen to do it on the days he's doing something innocuous. Yeah. Oh yeah. good, you're just in time. Would you like some cookies? Are they <laughs> evil cookies? Well not this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alright, here's a question from Might of Gabura. When the end said he devoured slash destroyed worlds, was that referring to universes, planets, or both? Also, is the end the strongest enemy in the Sonic franchise as a whole so far? Your opinion as a casual and as a lore manager, what's your take on that? The intention was planets, and these, I think we've discussed this before. I, when you get down to Solaris is probably the most powerful, but the end's pretty high ranked up there. Mm -hmm. Second place, at least. They could fight, and it at would least. be like, who would win? Questionable. I don't know. Well, I mean... If it's not second place, it would be first place. I said he's not first place. So what does at least mean? Hoy. <laughs> if you ain't first, you're last. Shake and bake. <laughs> Here's one from Mexico 17. It's time for whatever the heck the new equivalent of the Sonic Twitter takeovers are going to be. But instead of the familiar faces and a potential one or two new ones, we instead are treated to Surge Kit and Starline having performed a hostile takeover. Did Starline survive? Did he get isekai into the takeover, or is he secretly a sock puppet being controlled by an even crazier Surge? Does Kit manage to last through one question where someone ask his, asks for his individual thoughts? When Surge inevitably gets cyberbullied by trolls sending her photos of them writing stuff on her giant forehead and asking when she's going to get over herself and what order she's going to kiss Sonic and Amy, will her attempts at cussing them out be censored by beeps, dolphin noises, or her getting smacked by a giant magic newspaper? And do any of them survive Eggman's wrath when he gets his electrically insulated gloved hands around their necks once everyone's free? You already answered this one pretty much. <laughs> You've covered all the bases. It's like, do you, do you want Ian to answer this question? I mean, no, you, you just answered it yourself. <laughs> I mean, pick your favorite scenario and run with it. There you go. <laughs> Why not all of them? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ian, you didn't have to do any work on this one. <laughs> that was an easy one. <laughs> Still, all the same. Probably about time we took a break. Yes, yes. Although the Surge forehead thing is really funny. <laughs> this episode, we have a sponsored ad from our good buddy, Daniel H. He says, good day to you all. I'd like to take a moment to boost a friend of mine, Miss Jordan Worth Cobb, an aspiring filmmaker and fellow nerd. She's been through a lot here in the natural state. It's not exactly been safe here for transgender people like herself, but she's got a promising job opportunity that could change things. She could use some cash moving and securing a place to live. If you have the time, please click on the link below, which we will have in the description below, to read up on her story and maybe send a coin or two her way. And if you would, please spread the word. Thank you for your time. Be well. You can find that at gofund.me slash 289 Four two six seven zero. We're back, and we got a question from Noni. Cheese and chaos switch bodies for a week. What happens? <laughs> Cheese and chaos happens. Well, chaos trapped in the dinky little chow body is just kind of, kind of sit there around the master herbal, hanging out with Knuckles, being relatively passive but attentive. <laughs> Very attentive, mm -hmm. maybe with a grumpy face sometimes, but they're just going to kind of chill out there side by side. And if as long as nobody starts trouble, that's how they'll stay. Mm -hmm. 
Cream, meanwhile, now has a much bigger companion following around. <laughs> I imagine she still wears a signature bow tie. Well, yeah. And uh, <laughs> when Cream says, cheese, get them. Oh, do they get got? <laughs> the question is, what form of chaos is this? Should, I, should we assume it's chaos zero? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Darn. <laughs> no one chaos seven Although following her around. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of cream riding atop perfect chaos that still has the little bow tie <laughs> is delightful. Perfect cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh, that's good. That's good. Perfect cheese. Mm. Cheese is perfect. Gouda better best. <laughs> Thunder, cheese and lightning. <laughs> is Gouda cheese what you have instead of perfect chaos? I, I just did that joke. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Let Aaliyah be funny. <sighs> Here's one from a normal person. For no particular reason, Tangle just so happens to find the sacred sword Caliburn in her possession. How well would they get along in battles and as friends? It would take a little bit. I think she would kind of crumple under Caliburn's withering assessment of her abilities more than Sonic ever did. I mean, Sonic's response is to snark. Tangle would actually take it to heart and, you know, try a bit harder. But eventually Caliburn would see, you know, how hard she's trying and how genuine she is. That she truly does have the heart of a hero. And then you basically have that whole sword on a rope technique, only it's Caliburn with Tangle's tail. And that's <laughs> vicious. <laughs> uh, does she handle Caliburn with her tail or her hands? The answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> also with her feet, maybe. And he doesn't like it, but she gets results, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see it. I could see it. Oh, that would be good. That would be fun. I would like that. Uh, some people are concerned about giving Tangle a sharp weapon. I'm like, uh, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Tangle, what do you have? A knife! No! <laughs> <laughs> Should Tangle have a knife? Hmm. <laughs> Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Here's one from OK Cheese Stick. The Archie Sonic reboot happened when I was 10 years old. At the time, I didn't even know it was a reboot. I just thought it was a much more elaborate Genesis arc. <laughs> I even wrote in a Sonic Grams asking if Surge was going to come back as a werehog. I feel bad for whoever had to read that question in a child's handwriting. Between all my local comic shops closing and me just kind of losing interest in the story after a couple years, I stopped catching up with the comics until they ultimately were canceled. Looking back, it's obvious it came from legal troubles, but was there a conscious effort to make it feel seamless for anyone who was unaware of the problems behind the scenes? Such as younger children or casual fans? Just a quick aside, I did handle some of the fan mail over the years. Yeah. Is it possible you read this Scourge, one? <laughs> Scourge being a werehog seems kind of familiar, I wonder if I, I did. <laughs> well, I mean... That's fun. <laughs> they may not be the only person who asked it, to be fair. Sure, sure, sure. It, it's possible. But it's a nice distraction from the fact that I'm that old. Anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We There was a lot of long phone meetings and various rapid uh, pitches and thoughts on how best to handle the move because it had to happen. And there was also concern over how much connection would could there be for various reasons. So, but we also didn't want to just go whole, full cold turkey because we felt like that would be more alienating than anything else. But it was also the safest option. So, yeah, we spent days deliberating and revising and pitching and whatnot, trying to figure out the best approach. And what you see is what we came up with ultimately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. In some ways, it might have been better to just rip the Band-Aid off immediately, but eh, I guess it depends. Yeah, hindsight's twenty twenty. you know? 
sure maybe and you know there's there's that alternate timeline where we did go that route and we're sitting here talking about how oh that hurt maybe <laughs> it would have been easier to or better just to ease folks into this you know maybe, just for a few issues get them acclimatized maybe 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 we'd be here i don't know maybe in an alternate timeline that would have totally uh ruined your career but i doubt it but who knows <laughs> Then we wouldn't be here at all. Oh, that's terrifying. What a scary thought, Ian. A world without the Bumblecast. I don't know what I would do without it. I don't know. I don't have nothing without anything. You have it, KNGI. I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing. You don't know what I have. I have nothing. <laughs> Nitro game injection. It's nothing. <laughs> it's true. Here's a question from Reckons. Sonic CD is a Japanese manual. It says Metal Sonic is powered by an Oregon engine. Without getting too deep into pseudoscience, that would mean he's powered by the life energy of the universe. Would this account for some of his personality quirks? Also, how cool is it that Eggman built that? <laughs> it would be kind of neat if we went back to that element, at least of, you know, Eggman having machine that actively draws life out of the surrounding environment to power itself would really fit with the, you know, industrial anti-environmentalism angle. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I, I think that's been, pr <sighs> what do I say without putting my foot in my mouth again? I, I don't think that's going to be referenced again anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Never say never, but yeah. Probably won't. Here's one from Rock a Million. If you had the option to permanently kill off one member of Sonic's games game cast, who would it be and why? I wouldn't. <laughs> Who's the least controversial? None of them. Well, not even that. It's like I see at least a modicum of potential in all of them. Whether it's, you know, just as a supporting thing or what, it's you know, I wouldn't want to <laughs> off them mm -hmm. and the that and the ones that you could safely dispose of would have such a nominal effect on the greater franchise and narrative then what's the point aside from ticking off their particular fan base and if you do target somebody who is you know who matters then you've got to restructure the whole brand can you imagine the sonic series without tails Mm. Like, yikes! Mm. Yeah, yeah. The chat is saying that I would kill Shadow. You're wrong, actually. You are wrong. I would kill Sonic. Yeah, that one I saw coming from a mile away. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> it, it, it would be the most interesting, because it would finally give the other characters a chance in the limelight, and we could follow them for a while, and do things with them. Without having to view it through Sonic as the central character. So. But like I said, that will require a complete restructuring of the franchise. That is not what Sonic is right now. So. Mm -hmm. Sonic without Sonic. It's like Garfield without Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic minus Sonic. Good. Get rid of that guy. <laughs> uh, a complete restructuring would be great, actually. But you know, that's just a that's just a, another that's a, another thing. <laughs> it's a spinoff series at that point. That that's the end of modern Sonic and the beginning of postmodern Sonic. <laughs> Ah, uh, Sonic's Victorian era. I remember it well. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question from Scourge Time. Let's say we have a summer special comic with Scourge. We know Sonic loves to relax and maybe play some volleyball, but how would Scourge spend his day on the beach? Does he prefer the Mobius or Moebius beach? Could you give a little story about his day? I mean, he would enjoy chilling out on the beach himself, sure. And then he gets hungry, so he goes and raids whoever's grilling out there. And, you know, now he wants to burn off some of those calories, so he's going to go wreck somebody's volleyball game. 
stop on some sand castles, purposefully run within the surf to drench people, uh, <laughs> shout shark when there's actually nothing out there. Maybe that's insulting to somebody. I don't know. Dig it's... some dig some holes in the sand and then bury people in them. <laughs> oh, just straight up burrow a whole extra mile under the beach so it caves in on people. Yeah, yeah, that too. <laughs> He would lure sharks to the beach just to make his <laughs> his uh, claims of sharks real. I would say, you know, lure orcas in, but orcas hate hedgehogs in the prime universe. They would love hedgehogs in the anti-universe. But then again, they're enamored with them. Wait, so he's leading them to beach themselves on the beach. That That's even worse. That's yeah. horrendous. And so is he. <laughs> Wait, was that a thing? <laughs> was that a thing? I don't remember this. The orcas hating hedgehogs? Uh, Sonic Adventure, Sonic 06. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Those, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> For some reason, I thought this was like a, a story thing in the comics that I completely missed. Like, I don't remember. No, 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 but it would fit right in there with, like, the Gallagher era stuff. Yes, yes, yes. That's very deep That's lore. A... <laughs> we, are, we are sorely missing the story of, like, the Orca <laughs> hitman that has to be foiled by the 40 Fathom Freedom Fighters. <laughs> it's true. It's true. We're also missing all the Orcas that took down all all of uh, the rich people's boats and Eggman's boats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, it'd, be, it'd be a con artist orca named Shamamu. <laughs> I can see it now. <laughs> it's just an orca with like a little bowler hat on the side of his head, chomping on a cigar that's burning underwater. Why did we ever think this franchise was good, Ian? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. That's great. I know. Everything I just described is gold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I know. It's incredible. Uh, backtrack agree with me okay i mean yeah <laughs> it's still it's still not great though i mean <laughs> or maybe it is i don't know man i don't know how i feel about this <sighs> are you sad that we didn't get shamu comment below i am yeah i kind of am yeah oh well here's a question from scurvy pirate hog an episode of Sad AM saw Sonic dealing with having temporarily lost his powers. Similarly, in an issue of Archie Sonic, saw Sonic's powers temporarily getting transferred to Mung Mutsky. So, this whole thing made me wonder. What if something happened where Sonic's powers got permanently transferred to someone else? Like, for example, Amy. How would they deal with this permanent change, do you think? How would they react? Well, that particular example is pretty much just the body swap episode question from last week more or less yes uh, but if it's a permanent switch amy would you know have to dedicate some time to figuring out how it works but once she gets a handle on it she's just going to be a more proactive helper around the world she basically takes on sonic's role only where sonic is kind of a i'll help out if i come across it she would be actively looking for those in need Amy is uh, would Sonic. be a way more competent Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> and Sonic, with Amy's general abilities, and for the sake of this scenario, we're going to assume that the hammer isn't an ability, it's just a tool that she has. You know, that's still impressively nimble and acrobatic, so he's going to continue to do what he does. It's just he's going to have to learn that he has limits now. I got your limit right here. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's one from a spoiler 1001. Say Scourge and Fiona's relationship was able to continue. And we see how this aspect of them changes them through time. What would have happened if for some reason or another Fiona dies? How is Scourge handling the grief? Depends on how she goes out. If it's somebody else takes her out, it's an excuse for him to go on a revenge spree. If he takes her out, he's just going to say she deserved it and move on with his life. And either way, he's going to try to use it to get a pity hookup. 
you know, oh, I'm I'm so torn and broken. If only someone could heal my broken heart. Also get my tab. <laughs> and do my laundry for me. <laughs> and order pizza, you know? Uh, uh, I'm saying at most he might be kind of put out for 24 hours. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. If that. Here's a question from Thevius. It's Uno Night, and the main IDW Sonic cast is invited. Who joins into play? How does it go? And who rage quits when their hand is swapped with another that's filled with 50 cards? I'm going to say Sonic on that one. Really? I was thinking, like, Knuckles. That seems like a very Knuckles thing. Like, you could just, like, hey, look over there, and then swap out the his hand for I mean, more hand. Fair. And then he'd look back and be like, what the heck? And then pff, cards would explode out of him. <laughs> to be fair, I think everybody would rage in that scenario i mean yeah like you could have the most enlightened buddhist monk in the party and he would still rage at 50 but true you know sonic <laughs> you're already asking sonic to sit there and play a somewhat strategic card game mm -hmm. so he has to sit still for an extended period of time and you just handed him 50 cards which means he has to sit there longer <laughs> i think he might snap I think he might actually walk away. <laughs> wow. Impressive. I mean, really, it's down to a question of how extreme everyone would react. Knuckles, as you described, Sonic would just kind of flip it and move on. Whisper would get very quiet, like <laughs> unnervingly quiet. You think she's quiet and then you knew a new level of quiet. Oh, she's plotting you your demise. <laughs> She's going to kill you. She will find Start you, and she will exits. kill you. <laughs> I mean, I think the only one who is pleased by it is Silver, because now he has even more cards to play against you. Ha ha! Would Blaze just set the cards on fire? <laughs> She would glare, but then she would play on because she's not going to lose without dignity. She's not going to lose. She will find a way to turn this around. You have declared war on her personage. <laughs> she shall see this through. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, yes. General doesn't have a reaction because he's never in that position. He's already figured out who has the cards <laughs> and is strategically placing his own so he never falls for that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Here's a question from Twilord. The year's 2035. Life is good. Harold the Death Spawn is a fan favorite, and Shadow is getting his second movie trilogy with Eclipse replacing Doom. Like Metal Sonic did Eggman for Sonics. In response, Sega wants Eclipse in modern. How do you introduce him in this new era? More or less just copy-paste from what we did in Archie. Like, that was already pretty game-faithful, aside from a handful of details. I mean, yeah. He was specifically designed to fit within the game universe. Like, he was yeah, decidedly designed for that. It was almost a soft pitch. Look, Sega, this neat idea. Don't you want to use this? <laughs> so. Yeah. But you got to remember <laughs> also hard. that Shadow is babysitting a death spawn in this universe. So does that change anything? <laughs> Well, it just means that we have an extra scene of Shadow telling him not to speak to his weird uncle. Oh, yeah, that's true. But we don't me associate with him, Harold. Now go to school and don't <laughs> eat any more children. <laughs> Would Eclipse be jealous? <laughs> oh, absolutely. He pulls what? up in his Corvette after school and is like, hey, Harold, you want to go out, eat some children? <laughs> I won't tell dad. Delicious. <laughs> you gotta be who you are, man. And what that is, is a horrible face devouring slug monster. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm the cool uncle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Eclipse kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, if the dark arms are anything to go by, he's good with, kill with kids, so. <laughs> All right. Ooh, he's good with kill. I was I got caught between children and kids and realized what that came out as and it's like well it's still applicable. <laughs> I didn't quite catch that at first. <laughs> uh, all right, let's move on to this last question from Wild Cards 717. 
Did you consider other lemur species, red ruffled fork mark, uh, silky sifka, etc., when you changed Tangle away from a rabbit, or was she always ringtailed? Did you pick ringtailed because they are so recognizable, or because they are commonly considered to be one of the most aggressive species of lemur? That is more of a Tyson Hess question because he was lead on the design. The tangle of the hair was my initial pitch, and he and the editors at IW handled everything after that with Sega's feedback and stuff. Uh, I had a little bit of input. You know, when Sega re- rejected the hair angle, it's like, well, what are some other animals out there? And I pitched a few ideas, but really that's more Tyson's work. I would imagine it's just because ringtails are iconic. Oh, yeah, but the most I recognizable. Not, I can't say that with 100% certainty. Yeah, yeah. Well... It worked out in the end, so I am okay yeah. with it. Yes. Yes. All right. That's going to do it for all our questions. Thank you, as always, to our patrons over at patreon.com slash mumblecast, ko-fi.com slash mumblecast, and our YouTube members for submitting questions and supporting the show. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and we will see you next time on the Bumblecast. Take care, everybody. Let's get out of here. Uh, I don't know why I'm throwing this all out there. You're the one who manages this. I don't know. I manage nothing. I I don't know how I manage anything. I don't manage. Manage to... I don't know. Manage. How do you manage, Ian? I don't know. (laughs) Okay, good. (sighs) That's all of us. An episode of Set AM saw Sonic dealing with temp- having temporarily. <laughs> You've been listening to the Bumblecast, a co production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at bumbleking.com and kngi.org. Playing the song again. There I go, turn Turn the page. page. (laughs) Oh, out there in the spotlight, we're a million miles away. I can't sing in tune to save my life. (laughs) Trying to give away (laughs) as the sweat pours out your body. Like the music that you play. Wee <laughs> uh, All right. This is Big the Cat singing. No. No. No, no, no. No. Yeah, that sounds very different. <laughs>